Hi, Floss Tube. <laughs> Welcome to episode 35. Um, it is Monday, the 14th, and um, Monday, the 14th of June. Monday, the 14th of June. And it has been two weeks uh, since last time. Uh, Stitch Mania is way past over. <laughs> and I was thinking, um, uh, let's see. And I was thinking, the pressure is off now I can just go back to my whips you know take it easy smeezy and I came uh, to the point today where I was thinking well it's time for floss tube and then I thought what have I been stitching on you know the past two weeks and I was like okay okay I thought stitch mania was a lot <laughs> I think I've stitched on five or six five projects it's actually six i think if i were if i count the one i have at work that's that's a lot yeah for me it is anyway uh i want to start uh, this episode with rambling as usual but then i want to say thank you to uh i want to get the name right kylie uh who bought me some cups of coffee thank you thank you thank you very much i uh, it's very appreciated when i get the mail uh from the, from the ones who has bought me coffees it feels a bit overwhelming uh, that you guys want to give me that support it's very appreciated and it goes straight back into cross stitching and the channel of showing you guys stuff thank you very much now <clears throat> so and of course i want to say thank you for all the new subscribers and thank you to all you guys who decides to come back and watch my madness I have been thinking my channel shouldn't be called 144 hobbies. It should be called 144 whips. I think that's more <laughs> me at the moment. So I have my little planner. I need to order one again for the coming years. Um, I have stitched on softest steel which I decided to stitch a hundred stitches every day before I get to stitch anything else and I've stuck to that plan and we will talk a little bit about how I feel about that <laughs> so I stitched on softest steel my fairy tale once upon a fairy tale I've stitched on mirabilia my poison garden by chatelaine I stitched I started the shelf life from gecko rouge and I joined the challenge this week, this weekend, with the ancient stitching stitch on the oldest whip you have. And I have enjoyed myself so much. I, really, so much. And I'm so glad I joined the challenge, challenge with the ancient stitching because I was amazed how far I gotten on that stitch. And I just want to keep on going. But let's start from the beginning, and that is Once Upon a Fairy Tale, which I am totally, totally all in love with again. So now my stupid, silly computer started again. Maybe I can. Maybe I can just lock it. Oh, no. You will just have to have the extra light. I'm sorry about that. So, where is my. It's here. It's on the floor. Yes. I have cross stitches on the floor sometimes. And a little bit of haul. Yes. I love it. I don't want to stop. I keep 
thinking about it and just looking forward to when I can get back to it. I can get back to it today if I want. Of course, it's my choice, but I also want to stitch on all the other stuffs. So, yeah. I mean, oh my friggin' God. <laughs> it looks so cool. I mean, this, the last, not this time I stitched, but the last time in April, when I stitched uh, on it, I found the lamp and I was like, wow. That was like confetti hell for sure. But it just made me feel like I want to explore more. I need to get to some more of these amazing details, you know. So I have completed these top bookshelves shelves and there's a new lamp there you know and I, I saw it when I stepped back I was like wow that's another lamp and then I've continued down here on the wall and with the trees and then I found something here and yeah I did peek take a look on the finished piece and that's a sword so I think that's like a sword in a rock oh man i think it's so cool and i am parking and not parking i'm a little bit i don't know should i just take the thread and just continue down one column until it ends or should i just do that for like three color uh, grids down and then park the thread i don't know i don't know how i'm gonna stitch it and I don't want to park and do the snake method, just stitching t a 10 stitch row by row. I can do that on confetti heavy areas where it's a bit difficult to keep track, but it will take way too long to do that. But I cannot get wait to get back to this. So how many stitches did I do? Um, yeah, that's the thing. I don't think I can say exactly how many stitches because I was filling in when I started stitching. I think I, I wanted to cross extreme cross country stitch and then I stopped. So I have stitched a lot of these, you know, black in the sky on the old pattern before they recharted it. And I haven't filled in those stitches. I will, I do that as I go. So I started filling in a lot of it because I found found them in the pattern in Pattern Keeper. So that's like a thousand thousands of stitches and yeah. So I think I tried to calculate about how many stitches, but I'm not sure if it's the right. I wrote down 2389 stitches and I think that is pretty much it. I love it and I love the 11 by 11 frames before I only used 17 by 11 no more 11 and I am going to try um, some uh, like Darcy the stitchy man it uh, talks about 11 by 8 and that that might be easier for the hand but I don't know this with all the fabric hanging this is heavy stuff so I don't think my hands will you know like to hold that wait okay so um i talked about what am i doing i'm uh, wrapping my book up so i will keep it in the q snap because i am planning on getting it out as soon as i have a week for it which will be uh in July. So I just wrap it around the Q-snap like this. So last time I talked about Leah Gurr who has some uh, tips on how to stitch a little bit faster and I wanted to try that out. Also because I, I bought a thread pack unfortunately for like for the fairy tale. Uh, I bought a thread pack from an amazing lady in the UK um, but for the first chart so 
it doesn't fit the new shard. There is a lot of 09, which the new shard doesn't even have. And there is not enough, enough of, I think it's the 3371. I'm not really sure. I don't remember which, but hey, I will solve it as I go. And the floss cards, uh, she has put them on. The good thing with Heaven and Earth, now I'm just jumping back and forth, but that's how my brain works. Uh, when you buy kits from Heaven and Earth, they laminate the floss cards and they use small plastic rings where they put the threads on, which is awesome. So if you can afford their kits, I would recommend them. But the shipping, I actually looked at a kit yesterday <laughs> and the shipping is like $80. 80 dollars 80 freaking dollars to Sweden. That's like half of what the kit costs. And then don't forget the taxes and the customs and is not no, no. <laughs> anyway, the floss cards, you know, uh, you get from, I got from this place are like the paper ones. And when I pull the threads, they break. So I didn't like that, of course. So I went with Leah Gers. Uh, example her link and everything is in my floss tube 34 so go check that out uh, I bought these from Etsy and since my once upon a fairy tale is the max colors you can fit 35 colors on one so I need seven but I've taken I think I took like three not strands, but pieces, lengths, three lengths of strands from each color and put them here. And I just, I've just written down the number of the thread, the DMC thread, because I always look for the numbers, not the symbols. Um, and these are nice. The only thing I don't like is the white thing that you stick. It's sticking uh, to the thread organizers and you can see here on this one it's like uh, letting a little bit go let it go let it go no um, so yeah but I, I think this is a nice system I like this a lot and they're from uh, was it Lithuania no, it was from, uh, what's that other place called? Estonia, Lithuania. Yeah, one of the Russian areas and they're in the European Union. So it was fast. It was no charge, extra, extra charge or anything. So, and the company I ordered them from was very nice, very fast. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. You just, this is how I am. So, no, no edit, editing. And here's, I have a box with all the, the whole thread kit. And yeah, um, they're on these kinds of cards. Uh, and I braided slash plated some of them. Um, and where the cards break, Let's, it's like um, here underneath the thread, they rip. So then, you know, the card won't hold the floss anymore. So that's how I changed it. Um, and that's how I store my Once Upon a Fairy Tale. And then I just, now you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just laying them, the organizers on top like that. Like so. And then I take my Q-snap. I put it over it like this. And that's just because it is the max colors. There are so many colors. I don't know how to store it differently. Now, Leah Gurr, um, sh 
showed how you can make your own homemade needle parking organizer instead of buying the expensive Paco organizers. So I wanted to try, and this is also for my Once Upon a Fairy Tale. So <laughs> I'm using these, you know, where you use for cleaning, scrub uh, things. Yeah, and I glued it to this lid. And then I took uh, copies of the um, color keys, floss keys, whatever, and glued them on top of there, that, these. And then I'm just parking my needles. Can you see that? With threads. And yeah, it looks a bit messy. I'm trying not to pull too much in them. Uh, I try to, I really try to like keep them for each column like this. I don't, as I said, I don't want to pull too much and I just scatter the threads like this. And it, it kind of works, it's pretty nice. You know, I see which color I'm gonna use. I'll look, do I have it? Yes, I have it. I take the needle and it's already threaded. So yeah, I'm gonna keep on trying. I understand it looks messy. I'm not sure it's the best way, but hey, if we don't try it, we don't know if that's something you like. So that was the first one. And of course, I always forget, I Once Upon a Fairy Tale is a supersized Max Colors. It's by Amy Stewart. It's in heaven and earth design. I'm stitching it on 25 count using one thread over one, doing a full cross. All right, I think that was all. <laughs> and I, I can see I'm already 18 minutes in, oh my God. Now, <clears throat> What's the next thing I stitched on? Fridays, I have set off for Mirabilia's and Chatelaine's. So Friday, I stitched on my Mirabilia. I'm just gonna ten tension my scroll frames. I love my scroll frames. I wanna have so many of them. I wanna have, I wanna have, I wanna have. I can't buy them all. Anyway, um, yes, my, my Mirabilia, uh, Lady of Mystery. And I stitched all these blacks, black flower stuffs, and I started filling in the darker reds. And I beat as I go. So I don't know if you can see the white small dots around there in the red. That's where I'm gonna put some black beads. I think they're black. So not a lot of progress, but it's like Friday evening. Every little bit is a progress. Um, and I was actually thinking because the, the red thread is really, um, I don't know, they, they uh, fray, fray off or something. I don't know how you say it, but um, I don't think that's going to be so good for the white skin, the light skin of the Mirabilia. So I was actually considering going back up and finish her arms and face actually before I continue with the dress. So I might do that. Uh, and she, I always forget, I'm sorry. She is stitched on. 28 count, it's a hand dyed fabric, even weave. Uh, I know it's called Ruin Moss. And now I don't know if it is from Crafty Kitten or if it is from some other dyer in the States. I don't know, I'm sorry. But it's difficult to see, but it has a little bit of greenish tone in it. And I thought that green and red, they, it goes pretty much pretty good together so that's that <clears throat> and then and then I had a new start shelf life you know the insane big 
design from Gecko Rouge. I decided to start that. It is stitched on 25 count, it's the easy grid. Using one thread over one, it's a full cross. And I'm using the 11 by 11 Q snap. And this is how far I got on that. It looks so cool from a distance, up close, it doesn't look that cool. I'm very skeptic, <laughs> but I think that's because I'm so used to stitching um, heaven and earth. So, but it looks pretty good. But when I'm looking close, I don't like the black in here. It's like, it's not blending in from, you know, close up. And there are some very blue stitches here when I'm like, why? And, but says it looks so good from a distance and I've, there's uh, at least one other lady in the Gek Rouge group that is stitching it and she's like on 30, the 30 second page. It's like, it looks so cool. So I'm thinking, you know, like on heaven and earth, sometimes you think like, why do you have these colors in the skin or in that? Why do you have purple in, uh, I don't know, you know, but when you look at it from a distance, it looks amazing. So I'm thinking, you know, just keep calm, keep stitching. It's going to look amazing. And um, yeah, uh, what else did I want to say about that? Yeah, on, on Pattern Keeper, some of the colors doesn't even look like the, the color I'm stitching with. So I'm very skeptic. I've double checked so many times if it's the, you know, do I really use, am I really using the right color for this symbol? And yeah, I am. So I don't know if it's just, you know, pattern keeper and the color keys that doesn't fit. I don't know. I like their needle minders. I was very skeptic about that. <laughs> I'm so skeptic. I'm sorry. Um, I got one just, it's the part of this, this stitch shelf. You can get this one as a kit like a quick stitch and um, on the back there's like this big black cover which is pretty nice because it covers the whole back side of the needle minder so it won't scratch your fabric if if that would you know happen uh, and then there's just a little magnet in on the back but it holds the needle so it's okay it doesn't hold my scissors which some needle minders do. Um, and I was thinking that this part was going to be so big. And I started stitching diagonal. You can see here, I started like that because I wanted to try um, thread, thy, thread the needle, uh, like just cross cut, country stitching on the diagonal um, just filling out all the same colors in the diagonal so you get that crisp fine line uh, and then I hit the pink and I was like oh the, the first room is so small so I, I kind of like that you get a lot of detail in a little room so and then I saw there that's like the walls coming so I was hoping to finish the first room, but I didn't. Um, yeah. So I'm not parking. I'm still stitching on the diagonal, but I'm filling out and just, you know, um, you know, stitch all the symbols with that thread until the symbol, there are no more symbols or the thread is finished. Then I go to the next. Oh, that was a lot of rambling. Jesus, I need to learn how to talk less. I stitched, where is it? Where did I put it here? No, haven't I written, written that down? Jesus, this is bad, this is bad. 
Friday's shelf life. Where did I write that down? Well, it has to be that one, 2,224 stitches. <laughs> so, not as much as I wanted to. But hey, it is what it is. I didn't bring all the floss cards and kit. However, I did make an unboxing, unpacking video of the Gecko Rouge. Go check it out, okay? Uh, it's an amazing kit. So, then we came to another Friday and it was time for my Chatelaine. Coffee. And it is my first Chatelaine kit. Um, it is Poison Garden. And when I got it, I stitched like crazy on it. So the whole center part of the Poison Garden is done. So now I'm up in the corners. And in March, I think, uh, it kind of pulled me, uh, the motivation disappeared a little bit because the thread I was using was so thick, it was difficult to stitch and I'm stitching it on 28 count, even weave, using two threads over two or one over one, depending on what the design tells me to do. But that thread was just very, um, thick, so it was difficult and I thought I was going to do that on every corner, but no. So I enjoyed Friday stitching on my Chatelaine. This is, let's see if I can just let it hang. Oh, this is the, like the whole progress I have so far. It is so beautiful, my goodness. Um, this is like the only cross stitch I'm really trying to take very good care of. So this is the corner I was talking about. It's the green. I need to do something. It's that green thread that was so thick and the ends are sticking up here because I don't know how to end it. Because the thread is so thick, I can't pull it in the backside of these stitches. It's not possible. So I'm waiting until I am starting to stitch stuff over here. So I finished the specialty stitches. It's Jessica stitches, but I haven't left a hole in the middle. I did a, a little bit different. And I jumped over to the other side and that made me so happy because then I was just stitching with the normal DMC and carry on water li lilies, I think it was. Um, but Friday evening, I was tired. I miscounted one square, one thread. And when I did it, I was thinking, you know, everything is symmetrical. And when I came down here, I was like, there is something off. And then I was like, nah, I just think I'm tired and I think it looks weird. So I kept stitching. Always trust your eyes and gut. So I had to, my goal was to finish all the pinks and the light greens. So I only have the specialty stitches for next, next time I'm stitching on it. But I had to, you know, frog this. It's not a lot, but Friday evening at 10 o'clock when you're tired and you want to go to bed. Oh, um, it was a lot. So I was, I was thinking if I already frogged, I'm not gonna, you know, test 
faith. So I just fixed the, the, the mistake and, and stopped. So that's why I have the part threads here. So I might, maybe, I might finish the threads. Like, so next, not this coming Friday, but the Friday after when it's time to stitch on shadow lane again, I just have the specialty stitches. So I guess I could finish that on Friday. And then the next time again, either I will go to the opposite corners or I will start up here on the big poisonous flowers. I can't wait. And maybe, no, I mean, that's, when I, when I feel, because I, I bead as I go, there are so many beads and crystals and everything in here. Uh, it just feels like metallic. I, I can't feel the stitching. And it's so sad that the light won't capture all the glitter, but it's, oh my God, it's amazing. I have a few, I've started releasing some of the unboxing kits of my Chatelaines I have got. I've ordered from both the European uh, cross-stitch company in the States, but also Hawkins Hobbies in the UK. Um, it's your choice, but if you are European, I would suggest ordering from Hawkins Hobbies, even after Brexit. It's, I think it's worth it. I'm just saying that. Um, and no, you don't have to uh, wait that long. Um, I've gotten my kids within three, four months maybe before they have collected everything. And it is delayed because of all the whole situation thing. Uh, but I've heard there is another place kidding up in Europe. And this person has waited more than 18 months to get a complete kit. And that's not okay. So, <clears throat> again, let's have another look at this beautiful, beautiful design. Poison Garden. And I didn't think I was going to like the... Um, symmetrical stuff that you know you do the same stitch maybe with different colors but the same stitch on all four sides but it's pretty relaxing um, yeah sometimes you it's so repetitive that you don't have to well you have to keep an eye on the chart but it, no it's not like uh, yeah, I, I find it very relaxing. And maybe the, the instructions for Poison Garden is pretty good. I don't know how, you know, the earlier, earlier designs, how they are. So this is the only one I've stitched. And for you guys who wants to know, uh, if you want to bead as you go, and there's a lot of beads and crystals to protect them, uh, I know there's a lot of stitchers who use batting from, you know, quilting. I didn't have any bedding at home, but I did have some wool, which is also a bit thicker and soft. So that's what I'm using. And I just, um, when I'm rolling it, I just put it under the rods and just roll it, you know, and it will protect. I put it on top of the Chatelaine picture where I've stitched and then I just roll it softly not tight and so far I haven't had any problems what I that I know of so I started like this and then I just have an old grossy towel here which I kind of cover it a little bit because we do have dogs and I don't like to clean. So it's a bit, you know, dog hair is a little bit of dust here and there. So <sighs> and I didn't bring uh, the flosses for the chatelaines, but I have them in floss away bags on rings. 
um, and all the beads in a Doris uh, bead bin. So uh, then what else? What's next Friday? Oh, yeah. Um, let's talk about that before we go to the ancient stuff. My focus piece of this month, and it has been actually for the whole year, is My Softest Steel uh, by Jewelry Bell slash Vallejo, Heaven and Earth. And um, it's also in the challenge 21,000 stitches in 21. And right now I'm at, actually, I'm halfway. Um, so I might need to um, spend a few weeks on this thing before I get to where I want to go so I can get the 21,000 stitches. So um, this year, my, my, my goal was to get to the top left corner and that was two pages of background and that is just not so fun to stitch. But I reached it already in April, I think it was. Um, so now I'm continuing. So this is, this is still my focus piece and I'm stitching 100 stitches at least every day before I get stitched on anything else. And I have stitched 100 stitches. So there, there is two columns and I'm getting close to the end of that page. Um, so I do that 100 every day. Uh, sometimes it's 105 and sometimes it's today was like 130 something because I wanted to finish the two columns there, there with one color. Um, yeah, um, because I think this is the one I have the most progress on. I'm not sure. Um, it might be my ancient one actually, but in my head, I think it's like, I think it's around 20 pa pages finish, I think. Um, and, uh, I don't know if I really like to stitch the hundred stitches before anything, because in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm going to stitch on like right now, Astronathus or the Once Upon a Fairy Tale. And it's like, no, you need to stitch a hundred stitches on this before. And maybe an hour passes by with that. I don't know if I like it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to give this like a full week. And then, you know, maybe it's, hopefully it's 3000 stitches and that's good. Um, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do. I'm sure what I do know is once I hit the flag, it's going to be so much more fun to stitch than just pink background. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure, but this is what I've been doing every day, a hundred stitches except for one day where I didn't want to stitch anything. I went to bed and bobbinated a little bit. Now, and it's stitched on, I'm sorry, 27 count Linda and one over one full cross. Now, my ancient project. The first kit I bought was the Trainer Dreams. I finished that. The second kit I bought, I, th the second, like heaven and earth, I fully kitted up. I didn't kit it up. I bought a kit was Astronathus by Nanny Thomas, Thomas Thompson, oh. Nanny Thomas. Um, and uh, it's unfortunately a discontinued um, uh, artist on heaven and earth. However, she is selling her own cross stitch patterns on her own uh, website so if you really really want to stitch her art it is still possible it's not like the outlanders which i really 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 want to stitch now that i've watched the series and i can't freaking get a pattern and i hate it seriously i hate it and every time i write down please get them back you know double the price. I don't care. I'm sure we're a lot of people who would pay the price to get a chart. And they're like, it's discontinued. And I know that. Thank you for the information. I know that. I still want the charts. <laughs> anyway, 
Astronathus. Here she is. Let's move the needle minders a little bit. She is I found an old picture and I had just gotten to her face like like that and I was like okay so I just got to the face I remember that and then I rolled up the fabric and I was like oh my god her face is almost done and I gotten to the dragon and the the armor wow I didn't know that I didn't remember that so I have been enjoying stitching this piece over the weekend and I haven't stitched a lot on it because this is like old school before pattern keeper. <laughs> this, oh my God, it's such a slow stitch. Um, I've stitched, let's see. So I've only stitched on it Saturday and Sunday and I've gotten in uh, 810 and 500 so that's 1300 stitches that's okay I guess but that's what I would like to do in one day uh, one week one weekend day you like a Saturday with pattern keeper however and I mean you can see uh, the, the thread mess this was b the time before I started watching floss tube for me there was no floss tube at this time i started it in 2011. oh my god that's 10 years ago <laughs> and i didn't know how you know and i didn't want to flip my project so i start all the threads with like a waist knot i pull it down and then up so I think that's okay. And then when I get close to them, I cut them off. Sometimes I cut part threads off when I do that. However, when I'm ending the threads, I pull them up to like to the side here. And I tied the ends together there. So it would be easier to pull and cut. So accidents happens where I <laughs> cut off part threads. My daughter just <laughs> pushed a note through under the door. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, do you think I can do something? <laughs> she's, she's throwing in notes under the floor. She wants some chocolate. <laughs> and then I'll go to one knock is no and two knocks is <laughs> Yes, usually it's the other way around. And then, oh, so I'm going to answer her by knocking on the door if she's allowed to eat some chocolate. <laughs> so that's a yes. And then another hello. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> Knock the door. Oh, yeah. I love her. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyhow, so I was laughing to myself because how I started ending the threads and how differently <laughs> I do it now. And, you know, when you pick that up and you see all these knots and thread ends and I'm like, how am I going to be able to stitch my 10 by 10 grid? within this thread mess and okay I worked it out but I don't know if I change the way now if it's going to change the tension in the weave so I will have to I will actually continue how I'm I've done it because I've stitched so much already I'm on page 15 so that means I, there must be 17 finished pages and I think the pattern is like 49 pages, so that's pretty cool. Um, and of course, I don't have a PDF because I bought a kit from a store in England. Um, I found them through Heaven and Earth uh, website at that time. So I know that they were like 
a wholesaler or dealer with them so it's all legit and I bought the printed pattern and the threads and they don't exist anymore um, <clears throat> so I cannot put the PDF pattern in pattern keeper I only have the paper pattern and oh my god going from pattern keeper back to the pattern I was like yeah I seriously need my parking method you know I I do the snake style like Ninja Needle she does it so well and you stitch the road from left to right and then you go from right to left and you just keep parking so I have like control over what I'm doing so I know we're not allowed to show patterns but you're not going to be able to stitch this design by looking at this page but this is how I do I highlight as I stitch and all the red dots are apart where I park them and before I got you know a rhythm into that you know my eyes was like you know you on pattern keeper you press the symbol and it highlights everything and you don't have to search for them but on paper you do and my eyes was missing symbols and when I parked thread and I keep stitching and I was like oh there was another symbol with that color and <sighs> yes I love pattern keeper and I'm glad I do have a few more I think I have two more pattern um, paper patterns um, and I'm starting to wonder if I actually bought the kits from them as well I don't know um, or have I print? Maybe I printed them out. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm. I love her. She is beautiful, and um, yeah, I'm going to stitch on her the coming week. So now we're on plans. I was supposed to stitch on her this weekend. I didn't think I was wanted to stitch more on her, but I do. So this coming week, it's Astronathus. On Friday, it's Mirabilia again. And the week after, the week after is, um, I wanted to go back to my Once Upon a Fairy Tale, but I'm also curious of what the wheel will tell me what to stitch. So I'm actually going to do the wheel for the, the week after. Um, so I'm going to need my phone. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's go to the wheel. Uh, so first I want to spin the wheel for how many times I'm going to spin the wheel. and I'm going to spin the wheel two times and then we have my whip uh, wheel and we're going to spin the wheel twice and another one Okay, this make this made me a little bit happy actually. Secret Garden, the super sized max color. Yes. Okay. Let's do this just in case so I can sync the sound. Okay. Secret Garden, yeah. Okay. I I'm I'm cool with that. Mm. Usually, I go get the um, the whip. Should I do that? So I can show you where I'm at? Yeah. I will grab my coffee and go get the stitch. Let's just... I'll be right back. 75 years later. That is not good when... Um, 
you haven't stitched on your studs for a while, then you don't remember where you have the things. I found it here, Secret Garden. I love my Secret Garden. I hated it at first because I'm parking and it was like seriously confetti from start to finish. Uh, but the second time I gave it a go, I was enjoying it very much and I love the colors. Uh, this is like an 8x8, I guess. Yeah, it has to be an 8x8. So this is like the progress I have right now, you know, the famous top left corner, which you just stitch a page and then you don't get any further. So I'm looking forward to that. But then I'm also like, where do I have all the threads for this? Am I taking it from my full DMC cover, uh, my, my, um, my DMC, you know, full set, which is not full anymore because I've taken the threads for a different project project. So I don't know. We'll figure it out. I mean, it's not like there's threads I can't stitch. So I can just, if I have a problem finding, you know, uh, the color in my set, then I can just stitch the part threads and be rid of the part threads, you know, I could do that. Anyway, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about the, uh, the choice. So, so that will be the second week and then Friday, second week, I'm back to my Chatelaine. So that is the plan for the coming two weeks. And I will continue with the 100 stitches a day on softest steel. Um, and I store them in a pillowcase, but let's talk a little bit about haul. I got from Amazon a 10 pack with these project bags, which is perfect for my heaven and earths. Um, so I got 10, I think I have around 20 stitches at the, at the moment. So I need 10 more. And my plan is to get those projects, which I have in my wheel into this, these, so I can store them a bit different. I mean, you can see you have my, it's meth, a mess. I have two uh, boxes here with just all the Mirabilia kits. I have, it's just, it's just a mess. So I bought 10 of these and then I have been so curious of trying these needle threaders out and I can't find a place in Sweden where you can buy one of these. Uh, so I think this is like a 20 pack. No, it says 30. <laughs> So, and yeah, I like these, it, they work pretty good. So I'm happy about that. Uh, and yeah, you can see this is like my astronaut this. I will, I don't know if I want to spend like a day where I, you know, organize everything or just organize it for now, for example, with my, um, secret garden i can put that in its own project bag uh, so i did that for my astronathus where i have you know the printed pattern this is how she's going to look by the way when she's done and it's just a big layer i'm sorry about that i have the thread pack maybe it says where i bought them from no ah but it is a company I don't remember a hobby, hobby craft, craft, hobby craft, something. Um, and then, you know, I have uh, printed out some of them. I always do, uh, not printed, uh, a working copy. When I work on paper, I do working copies, which I throw when they're done. And the, you know, the symbols, the keys, and a picture on how it's going to look. <coughs> And then I have my storage box with the, the threads for her. And it fits perfect 
in here. So when she's done stitched on, I will just take her off the, the scroll frame and, you know, just put it in the bag. I think that's going to work very well for me. Um, what else? Um, I got some fabric, some easy grids, and why I got some 25 count and some 28 count because when I stitched Eternal Promise on 28 count, I got brave and I thought, well, I can do that. So I wanted to, and I know that a super sized on the um, landscape uh, layout, or is it called horizontal? It doesn't matter. You all know, I'm going to start hopefully with Cat. Hello, Cat. <laughs> um, the amazing uh, animal kingdom hashtag the ambitious the ambitious no hashtag ambis, ambitious amazing am, animal kingdom adventures jesus that's a hard one to say um or uh hashtag a forest times four four a's times four no Never mind, I'm just messing this up. Uh, I know anyway that a supersized with a three inch margin will fit perfect to the biggest, the largest um, Ominac frame. Stay there. So I was thinking, I want to stitch amazing, you know, Animal Kingdom on 28 count with cxc threads i'm st i'm trying them out but then i realized after reading a lot that it's a bit thicker than dmc thread and then i was like mm, okay super size with maximum colors is confetti hell that might be hell and i don't want hell when i'm stitching a little bit of hell is okay not all the time so I got a little bit scared. So now I have this huge piece of 28 count. First of all, I was like, what am I going to do with it? I think I know now, but so I will use my 25 count for that and just use the Q-snap method. And my plan was the 28 count for Amazing Animals and the 25 count for the Game of Thrones uh, stitch I'm starting in July but then since I chose to use the 25 count for the amazing animals because of the CXC threads I didn't want to start Game of Thrones on the 28 count so I got where is it at oh here so I just had to go get some more fabric and I got this for my Game of Thrones because the Game of Thrones um, design, it's a lot of black, it's a lot of dark colors. So I was thinking, let's go get one of those darker um, fabrics. Um, so it's a 25 count as well. Um, it's it's uh, even weave concrete. So this is where I'm going to stitch the Game of Thrones on. Um, and for that, project books, project book or books on Etsy has the CXC threads. So I sent her the floss, um, floss chart for Game of Thrones and I asked her to make a kit with the CXC threads and it cost me 700 Swedish kroners, which is like $70 for the whole kit. And is, it is as big as a regular Heaven and Earth. So I have that here and I will bobbinate as I go and use, you know, these normal storage boxes. 
so that's what I've got and then you might think so that's all the the haul I've got uh oh and my new my latest chatelaine is coming from Hawkins Hobbies so it's it's in the mail yes um and then there's just one more kit chatelaine kit I feel I really think that I need and that's the Zen Garden uh Liesel hello Liesel and Gwen if you're watching hi uh she's stitching it right now and it's so beautiful it is so amazing there are so many things going on on that chatelaine and the waterfalls and the buddhas and the koi fish and the bonsai trees there is so many things so I need to save up for that but so you think what are you going to do with the 28 count fabric Linda well I don't feel complete when I don't have a king cade so I really need a king cade I was thinking about this before earlier last year I think and I was really into the one with the Santa sitting at the fire hall and the fire hall with the fire, whatever, at the fire. And there's a big tree and it's really nice. And I was like, well, I need a super size and a max color. And I was looking at it and looking at it. And I'm like, do you really want to? I'm not really into Christmas stuffs. So, you know, time went and I was like, no, never mind. However, Kincaid makes such amazing landscape pictures, arts. Oh my God. So I was looking at them and looking at them. And <clears throat> I have like a direct, direct link to heaven and earth here. And I'm going to pull down the um, light. So we have heaven and earth here. A look at, I, go, I usually go here every day. Take a look. So I like the one with the Vatican state, but for me, it's connected to like religion and no, I, it's just not me. And we have... Um, so I, I cooked it down to three different pieces, right? And one of them is like with a stream and there are some flowers around the stream. But then I was like, do you really want to stitch all that green? And the stream and the flowers? So I was like, no, I have my secret garden, the one I'm going to stitch in two weeks. Uh, or in one week and I think that's enough flowers for me um, so I took that away and then I had two left which are family reflection which is this beautiful beautiful piece and it has the stream it has the woods there's mountains in the background there's a high waterfall which makes me think of the highest waterfall in Sweden which we've been to me and my family a lot it's like my a part of my paradise on earth and here to the side there is a trail and I'm like, I love hiking. I would love to be a hiker if, you know, the dream, going to the Appalachian Trail and hike it, make a through hike, a dream. So why not stitch my dream? So I like this one a lot. However, there is another one with Kincaid, which is the Central Park in New York and let's do Central Park in in the fall oh, it's so beautiful 
and what why I like this so much is you know you have the lights and you have the 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 wagon there the water but in the background you have these massive skyscrapes and I even think it is the World Trade Center buildings uh, which would also be like a remembrance for the terrible things that happened um, but the contrast of having these massive skyscrapes and this you know the big big city and all of a sudden you know I don't know if it's the center of New York or Manhattan or whatever I have never been there you have this amazing Central Park which I understand is just like for me it's like you have this nature in the middle of the big city city and I like it a lot so I can't choose between them so I want to do them both <laughs> do them I want to start them both okay and I'm like you know super size max colors with these two pieces yeah I just feel it's never it's not gonna happen it's never ever ever gonna happen so I was like don't just forget about it but then I'm watching Noah if you haven't watched Noah go watch him he's amazing he's such a sweet guy however he's stitching a piece that's called the Victorian garden something Anyway, he's doing it in in a mini. So it's like there's trees, there's flowers, there's this house, there's sky. It's very much like, I don't know if it is Kincaid. Maybe it is. However, it is. I don't think it's Kincaid. But it looks like his kind of art. And he, he's ma doing it in a mini. And it looks fantastic. It is so beautiful. So I'm thinking the two as a mini on 28 count what do you think say yes yes i think so so starting plans in the fall two kinkades and i'm leaning on dmc because my first expression of cxc when i've got them like in the bags like this um taking them up like this feeling them I'm skeptic and there's another girl she, on Instagram a Swedish girl who got inspired and ordered some six CXC from China and she showed me pictures of it and there's some things we're both like Neh. I don't know DMC would not do this um, however she has already started stitching with it and she says it's amazing it's the same as DMC, no difference. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, and yes, I think the channel is called House of Stash, Stitch and Stash, House of Unloading. Oh, I'm sorry. She actually do did uh, two or three no she did three live uh instagram videos from stitchcon weekend a and i'm so happy she did because it really felt like you were there with them and i got to hear the speeches and she showed the tables where the brag table the small smalls exchange table and you know the um, uh, the designers where they showed off their stuff and you could buy the patterns thank you I know you're not watching my my uh, floss too but thank you for doing that you know I'm a Swede I, I don't think I could ever go across the pond to join them for a weekend it would be amazing to do that, do that and meet Pam and Steph for real oh I, I would oh it would be so amazing so anyway i'm so happy she did but at the table she was sitting there was this girl her name is lydia she also has a floss tube and oh my god she was stitching on a place of her own so i don't want to edit this and i had 
my where am I? I had my heaven and earth. Why why is this open? Stop. Where's my heaven and earth? Here. She was stitching on a place of her own and she had gotten a lot of progress on this piece. Uh, a, a place of her own and I have this pattern and I love the pattern and I don't understand why I haven't started it. I mean the confetti in this piece must be just amazing even in the regular piece. So I'll show you this one. You all know that one by James Christensen. There is so much going on. I mean, the carpet and the tapestries and her dress. <laughs> Just amazing. It's like a stitcher stream. And it was huge. And I figured out by watching her floss too. She's stitching this on 18 count Ada. So I really wanted to start this on 20, no, 18 count Ada. But then I'm like, do you really want to start that on 18 count Ada? But it's so huge. But so uh, I'm, I'm at a place where I say, I want to stitch it. I want to stitch it regular. Like the pattern I have is fine. It doesn't, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be confetti hell. And I can't make up my mind if I just want to go with the 25 count as I usually do with one over the one with the CXC or DMC, whatever. But in, in my heart, I'm like, I want it big. So, but then I didn't really enjoy 18 count too much when I tried it out on my Spangler. So I don't know. But those are three starts. Oh, I can't, I cannot believe I'm saying. So I'm starting. Animal Kingdom, August, I'm starting Game of Thrones, July, so it's September, October, November. And then I've said that 2022, no new starts, just getting progress. <laughs> we'll see. So King Cade's uh, Family Reflection, the mini, uh, Central Park in the fall, mini. And a place of her own, regular size. Our three stars are dying. I'm, I'm dying to start, you know. We'll see. Oh, yes. So, yeah, my mind is just cross stitching, cross stitching, cross stitching, cross stitching. That's, I can't get enough of it, you know. But hey, it makes me happy. It makes me relax from work. It makes me listen to so many audiobooks, and I love books. I wish I just had the energy to actually read them. I have like oh, my stack beside my um, bed. It is the Outlander. I just. It's not that difficult to read, you know. It's just read a page every day and you'll get progress on that too. And then I watched uh, Cat Talks and I think she's a writer. I want to know what she's writing. Cat, what are you writing? She talked about books and she mentioned Robin Hobbs' book. And it's fantasy. And I got the first book. Uh, so I would really like to try to write, read this. It's in English. My Outlander is in Swedish. Because it's just easier for me to read my own language. And, um, I don't know where I want to, yeah, I, yes. And I watch Floss Tubes and a series. You know, a lot of series and people at work are asking me, where do you get all the time? 
Well. That's what I do when I get home. I stitch. I talk about stitch. I dream about stitch. I think about stitch. I talk about stitch. It's just stitching. Stitching, stitching, stitching. And I have one child. And she's 14. She had a birthday last week. And we met the whole, the whole family. We were like 10 people. We're a very small family. And I invited them for cake outside on the lawn. We don't have our own house, so we live in this apartment stuff. But we have a lot of nature around where we live. A big lawn outside. So there were some, you know, seats, benches with tables. Uh, and we had bought picnic uh, blankets. So we put that out so everyone could, you know, have their distance. We had, you know, sanitizing for the hands and um, mouth masks, you know, for those who wanted to use. Nobody wanted to use them, but we kept our distances, no hugging, everything like that. But it was so nice to actually gather. And the sun was shining, which I hate, but, you know, it was still nice. And we got to eat our cake and I had bought some watermelon because it was hot outside and water and drinking and coffee, not drinking. You know, we don't drink in our family, um, but, you know, um, soda. Um, so that was really nice. I hope she had a great birthday. She got a VR classes, so she's looking pretty fun even my husband was <laughs> playing it they it looks so fun when they play that you know so yeah and you know I have a lot of time where I can sit and stitch when I'm home after work it's not many hours every day but um, yeah so that's what I like to do <laughs> I don't know why I started talking about that <laughs> oh my god so um, also, yeah, future. As soon as I've gotten my six-month voucher from Gecko Rouge, I'm ordering the gamer. That is also something I need in my stash. Yeah. Um, so that's all, folks. Uh, I was thinking because my floss tubes are so long and it takes so long to film and you know I've stitched on so many things so I'm wondering if it's better to do once a week for a while so we can shorten down the floss tubes like yeah so I just show maybe it's like two max three um, projects that I've worked on and we can just talk a little bit about that and f for the plan upcoming coming week so maybe that's like 20 minutes of floss tube I think that would be nice maybe I don't know what do you guys think um, I need to uh, stop talking and get back to stitching see you soon bye